source of full support to Bangladesh as Chief Advisor Professor Mohammed Yunus holds rare one-to-one -one meeting with US President Joe Biden. Indian External Affairs Minister meets Bangladesh Foreign Affairs Advisor in New York discusses various issues of mutual interests. Army chief vows to back the interim government so that general elections be held within next 18 months in the country. <music> Labor advisor urges workers to join work from tomorrow as garments factory owners and laborers reach agreement regarding workers' demands. Irregularities reported in allotment of 60 Katha plot in Purbachal to Sheikh Hasina and her family members' investigation demanded. Israel announces to accelerate attacks on Lebanon as death toll rises to 558, leaving more than 1,800 injured. And Bangladesh team to leave for the United Arab Emirates on Thursday to participate in ICC Women's T20 World Cup. Assalamu alaikum viewers, this is Upoma Shaha with you, welcoming you to the news at 10. You have just had the headlines, now moving on to the details. U.S. President Joe Biden held a rare one-on-one -on -one meeting with Chief Advisor Professor Mohammed Yunus on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly a short while ago at the U.N. headquarters in New York. President Biden expressed U.S. government's full support to Bangladesh and the Professor Mohammed Yunus-led interim government during the meeting. Professor Yunus surprised him about how the students rose against the tyranny of the previous government and gave their lives to create this opportunity to build Bangladesh. Professor Yunus stressed that his government must succeed in rebuilding the country and would need U.S. cooperation. President Biden said if the students could do so much sacrifice for their country, they too should do more. Professor Yunus handed a copy of The Art of the Triumph, a book on wall paintings drawn by the students and young students during the revolution to President Biden during the meeting. Chief Advisor Professor Mohammed Yunus today joined a welcome reception hosted by the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. The reception ceremony began at 8 a.m. New York time at North Delegate Lounge of the UN headquarters in New York to welcome the global leaders joining the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly, UNGA. At the reception, Professor Yunus exchanged pleasantries with Brazil President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, President of Mauritius, Prithvi Raj Singh Rupan and UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Volker Turk among others. Earlier, Chief Advisor Professor Mohammed Yunus arrived in New York to attend the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly. A commercial flight of Qatar Airways carrying the chief advisor and his entourage members landed at the JKF International Airport at 10.10 p.m. New York time on September 23rd. Bangladesh permanent representative to the UN Ambassador Muhammad Abdul Muhit and charged the affairs of the Bangladesh Embassy in Washington, DM Salahuddin Mahmood, welcomed the chief advisor at the airport. The chief advisor, along with his delegation members, was directly taken to his place of resident Hyatt Grand Central, New York, from the airport. On the sidelines of the UNGA, the chief advisor will hold a bilateral meeting with the U.S. President Joseph R. Biden at 11 a.m. New York time today. He is scheduled to deliver his speech at the UNGA at 10 a.m. New York time on September 27th. The chief advisor will also join high-level bilateral talks with several heads of the government and chiefs of the international organization. 
During his stay in New York, he is expected to hold bilateral meetings with Prime Ministers of the Netherlands, Pakistan and Nepal. U.S. Secretary of State and Tony Blinken, President of the European Union, U.N. Secretary General, U.N. High Commissioner for Human Rights, President of the World Bank and USAID Administrator will call on Professor Yunus as well. Indian External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar met with Foreign Affairs Advisor Mohammad Tawhid Hussein in New York. The meeting was held on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly session. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said these on social media X in the morning. During the meeting, they discussed issues of mutual interest between the two countries. Army Chief General Wakaru Zaman vowed to back the interim government come what may to help it complete key reforms so that elections could be held within the next 18 months. He said this in an interview with Reuters in Dhaka yesterday. General Wakaru Zaman said the interim administration led by Nobel laureate Dr. Mohamed Yunus had his full support and outlined a pathway to read the military of political influence. The army chief said that he would stand beside Dr. Yunus so that he can accomplish his mission. He also said a transition to democracy should be made within a year and a half. The country should get into the democratic process by this period, General Wakru Zaman added. Labor and Employment Advisor Asif Mahmood Shoji Bhuya said garment factory owners accepted all demands including refixing minimum wage by restructuring the workers' wage board. He made the comment while speaking to journalists after his meeting with representatives of owners and workers over ongoing labor unrest in the Secretariat this afternoon. During the meeting, the owners accepted all of the 18 demands from workers including implementing minimum wage in all factories by October 10th and paying ration through TCB and OMS in labor-intensive areas. The labor advisor urged all workers to join work from tomorrow to save one of the export-oriented industrial sectors of the country. At the same time, he also warned that legal actions will be taken if owners and workers again try to create unrest. Home Affairs Advisor, Retired Lieutenant General Mohammad Jangir Alam Choudhury, Industries Advisor, Adilu Rahman Khan, Fisheries and Livestock Advisor, Farida Akhtar, and Labor and Employment Secretary A.H.M. Shafiqus Zaman were present, among others, at the meeting. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, will provide technical assistance for the banking sector, reforms and prevention of money laundering as well as the submission of tax returns. Finance advisor Dr. Saleuddin Ahmed told reporters after a nine-member delegation of IMF led by its resident representative, Joy Dude, paid a courtesy call on him at his secretary's office today. The finance advisor also mentioned that IMF will provide technical assistance to the tax administration by June 2025. Drives will be conducted against illegal polythene shopping bags in super shops from October 1st and in kitchen markets across the country from November 1st. Besides, strict drives will be conducted in polythene manufacturing factories from November 1st. Environment, Forest and Climate Change Advisor Soida Rizwana Hassan said this while briefing reporters after visiting Mohammadpur Town Hall Kitchen Market in the capital today. The advisor said polythene is a very harmful substance for human body, brain and liver. She sought cooperation of all at individual and institutional levels to stop the use of polythene which is harmful to the human body. Earlier, the advisor visited different parts of the kitchen market. Officials of the ministry and traders of the market were present on the occasion. The government has published a draft list of 708 individuals who lost their lives during the People's Student Uprising in July and August 2024. The number of marchers might be increased in the future, said a release signed by Deputy Secretary of Health and Family Welfare Ministry, Umme Habiba. 
This list is available on www.hsd.gov.bt and www.dghs.gov.bt. It said, adding that the list will be open for common people from October 6th. The list compiled from various public and private hospitals and district sources identifies martyrs from the anti-discrimination student movement, the release said. The release urged the family members of martyrs, representatives and heirs to scrutinize the published name, address and other related information to verify correct or add names, addresses and other relevant details. The ministry has urged family members, successors and representatives to contact their local deputy commissioner, civil surgeon, Upozila Nirvahi officer or Upozila health and family planning officer with appropriate documents if any names of victims remain missing from the list. Former fascist Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had secretly secured Six plots for herself and the members of her family in the Rajthani Unnan Kutripakko Rajuk Purbachal new town project. Hasina and her family reportedly took possession of a total of 60 kata plot. This 60 kata plot of the land was designated for the building of social infrastructure. Sheikh Hasina took a plot on road number 203 and in sector 27 of the proposed diplomatic zone within the Purbachal project. A total of 60 kata of land was allotted to the members of the autocratic Sheikh Hasina family for just 1 crore 80 lakh taka at the price of 3 lakh taka per kata. The then Rajuk chairman Anisur Rahman said the entire process was done by the order of the highest level of government. Shushan Shroner Jonno Nagorik, Secretary Bodhul Alam Mojundar said that there should be an investigation if there is any irregularity in the allocation in the name of Sheikh Hasina and her family. TIB said corruption was spread at all sectors during the immediate past government. Additionally, it recommended that the plot allocated to the former Prime Minister and her family be cancelled. A writ petition has recently been filed with the High Court seeking the cancellation of allotment of plots in the names of Sheikh Hasina and her family members. South Korean Ambassador to Bangladesh Park Young-sik met BNP Secretary General Mirza Fakrul Islam Alamgir at BNP Chairperson Schoolshan Office in Dhaka today. During the meeting, they discussed various issues related to bilateral interests. BNP Standing Committee member Dr. Abdul Moin Khan, member of the Chairperson's Advisory Council, Tajvirul Islam and member of International Affairs Subcommittee Shama Ubaid were present. Briefing reporters after the meeting, Dr. Abdul Moin Khan said they had a detailed discussion with the South Korean ambassador on the country's current overall situation and investment issue. Now, international news. At least 558 people were killed in intense and wide-ranging Israeli airstrikes targeting Hezbollah in Lebanon. The country's health ministry said it was the deadliest day of conflict in 20 years. Thousands of families have also fled their homes as the Israeli military said it hit 1,600 Hezbollah targets in an operation to destroy infrastructure that the armed group had built up since the 2006 war. Meanwhile, Hezbollah launched more than 200 rockets into northern Israel, according to the military. Paramedics said two people were injured by shrapnel. World powers have been urging restraint as both sides appear to be spiraling closer towards all-out war. Hezbollah has said it is acting in support of Hamas and will not stop until there is a ceasefire in Gaza. On the other hand, the Israeli authority said they will continue their drive targeting Hamas and Hezbollah until they come to finish. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is set to present a plan for victory in the country's war with Russia to President Joe Biden during this week's visit to the U.S. Zelensky also intends to present the plan to Congress and the two candidates in the U.S. presidential election, Democrat Kamala Harris and Republican Donald Trump. 
He is expected to ramp up efforts to persuade the U.S. and its allies to allow Ukraine to fire the missiles they supplied deep into Russian territory for the first time in the war. Zelensky's visit to the U.S. coincides with efforts from the White House to prepare a new 375 million military aid package for Ukraine. The U.S. has been the largest foreign donor to Ukraine and to date has provided $56 billion for its defense. Meanwhile, while addressing the United Nations General Assembly, Zelensky will seek a global cooperation for Ukraine against Russian aggression. India has reported the first case of the Mpox clade 1 strain. This is the same strain which led to the World Health Organization who declaring Mpox a public health emergency last month. The Mpox clade 1 strain has been detected in an individual from Kerala. Official sources said clade 1B strain has been detected in the 38-year-old man from Malappuram district who had recently returned from the United Arab Emirates. The patient is currently stable and under observation. This was the first case of the current strain that led to the World Health Organization declaring MPOX a public health emergency last month for a second time, the official sources added. Indian Health Ministry confirmed the strain after the news agency ANI cited official sources as saying that the MPOX case reported in Kerala's Malappuram district last week belonged to grade 1. Since 2022, declaration of MPOX as a public health emergency of international concern by the WHO, 30 cases were reported in India. The interim government is trying its best to reduce the cost of Hajj. Efforts are being made to make the Hajj pilgrimage easier by reducing the cost in the sectors where there is a minimum scope to reduce the cost of the Hajj package. Religious Affairs Advisor Dr. A.F.M. Khalid Hussain said these after visiting Jamia Tulfala, Jamia Mosque and complex in Chattogram city today. The advisor said that he is scheduled to meet the Hajj Minister of Saudi Arabia soon. And in the meeting, he will request to make Hajj journey to Saudi Arabia by sea voyage in an initial stage in 2025, he added. The Religious Affairs Advisor said if it is possible, the cost of Hajj will be greatly reduced. Massive rumors and disinformation are being circulated over the recent incidents in Chittagong Hill Tracks. The fact-checking organization Rumor Scanner has so far identified 11 cases of rumors. According to primary assessments of the fact-checkers of the organization, some vested quarters are circulating these rumors and disinformation. The Chittagong Hill Tracks experienced an unexpected situation recently centering a splinter incident in Kagrachori. But the interim government managed to cool down the situation at the earliest. Law enforcers remain alert to ensure law and order and avoid further violence. Army officer Lieutenant Tanzim Sarwar Nirjan was killed by robbers during a raid in Cox's Bazar's Chokoria this early morning. He was rushed to the Ramu Combined Military Hospital in critical condition and died while undergoing treatment early in the morning. A joint forces team led by Lieutenant Tanzim was conducting the operation after reports that a gang of 10 to 12 robbers were attacking the home of a resident of Maispara village. Noticing the presence of the joint forces team, the robbers shot Tanzim in the forehead and struck him in the neck with a sharp knife. He was critically injured and rushed to the CMH at the Ramu Cantonment. Six were detained and a pickup truck, a motorcycle, a firearm and knives were also seized from the detainees. The inter-service public relations confirmed the army official's death. It said that a press conference will be held at a later time to provide the details of the incident. Now weather.
The low pressure area lies over West Central Bay and adjoining Northwest Bay of Bengal. Medov said under its influence, quality weather may affect the maritime ports, North Bay and adjoining coastal areas of Bangladesh. Maritime ports of Chottogram, Cox's Bazar, Mungla and Paira have been advised to hoist local cautionary signal number three. I repeat, local cautionary signal number three. All fishing boats and trawlers over North Bay have been advised to come close to the coast and proceed with caution till further notice. Meanwhile, Met Office in its weather forecast till 6 p.m. tomorrow said light to moderate rain or thunder showers accompanied by temporary gusty wind is likely to occur at most places over Rangpur, Rajshahi, Dhaka, Maiman Singh, Kulna, Borishal, Chottogram and Silet divisions. Besides, moderately heavy to very heavy falls likely to occur at places over the country. Night and day temperature may fall by 1 to 4 degrees Celsius over the country, said the Met Office. Now, news on sports. Bangladesh women cricket team will leave Dhaka for the United Arab Emirates on Thursday to take part in the upcoming ICC Women's T20 World Cup. A press conference, official photo session and all kinds of formalities were held today at Shere Bangla National Cricket Stadium in Mirpur. Bangladesh women's cricket team captain Nigar Sultana Jyoti has said that her team's primary mission is to win at least one game and relieve the forgotten taste of victory. However, their aspirations don't stop there. This time, they are also eyeing a spot in the semi-finals, added Nigar Sultana Jyoti at the press conference. Bangladesh won two matches on home ground during their debut in 2014 Women's T20 World Cup, but since then, the Tigresses haven't won a single match in the following four editions. Bangladesh will face Scotland on October 3rd in the inaugural match. Then, the Tigresses will play against England on October 5th, West Indies on October 10th, and South Africa on October 12th. To end the bulletin, headlines once again. U.S. assures of full support to Bangladesh as Chief Advisor Professor Mohammed Yunus holds rare one-to-one -one meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden. Indian External Affairs Minister meets Bangladesh Foreign Affairs Advisor in New York discusses various issues of mutual interest. Army chief vows to back the interim government so that general elections be held within next 18 months in the country. <music> labor adviser urges workers to join work from tomorrow as garments factory owners and laborers reach agreement regarding workers' demands. Irregularities reported in allotment of 60 kata plot in Purbachol to Sheikh Hasina and her family members. Investigation demanded. Israel announces to accelerate attacks on Lebanon as death toll rises to 558, leaving more than 1,800 injured. And the Bangladesh team to leave for United Arab Emirates on Thursday to participate in ICC Women's T20 World Cup. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us. And we invite you to watch our 11.30 Bangladesh. Until then, Allah Hafiz.